this clash between Facebook and others is kind of asymmetrical in the sense that democracy is messy and Facebook is not a democracy. Mark Zuckerberg runs that company very clearly and can, you know, push his perspective. And then politicians, policymakers kind of have to try to get their whole country in line behind it if it means suffering short term in their news feed, right? John, I think that is exactly correct. Facebook attempted to position what was going on in Australia as a tax on links to news. And in fact, it's an attempt to apply antitrust law in one of the few ways that a country of the scale of Australia can apply it, which is by essentially saying, I'm sorry, but if you're going to use your power in an anti-competitive way, we're going to make you reimburse those who are harmed. And the problem with this whole thing is that it, the original law is far from perfect. You would really hate to do policy that way if you have choices. But I think in Australia, they thought this was their best leverage. And unbelievably, Facebook overplayed its hand by turning off government offices, all kinds of services that are required in fire season. So they turned off fire departments, they turned off hospitals. And the result of this was a public relations disaster that even by Facebook standards was epic. But, Roger, what strikes me, too, is that if you're going to disconnect from needing Facebook, this is probably how it's going to happen. Like, if you're Australia and you want to welcome in some competition from a social network to supplement those services, to get your citizens' news from other sources where it's still social and they can share it, this is your chance. You, you, you better do it quick. Well, and I think they made it easy on them because they did this in such a ham-handed way without any warning. And it, I think if you're Australia, you look at this and you go, you know, we've been under colonial rule in the past for a long, long time. You know, we've got our independence. We're sitting there. We're a country which is very proud of the things that it does. And all of a sudden, you've got this co company from California telling you what you can and cannot do. I don't think so. Roger, I'm curious when you look at how you think you these these platforms should be regulated here in the U.S. Your new op-ed says you want these platforms for hate speech, for misinformation, regulated like chemical companies or regulated um, the way you'd have pharmaceuticals regulated. But what's so interesting here, and we see this with the fact that news is less relevant in Australia than it used to be, it, it, less valuable to the news feed, is that it's not just about preventing um, companies from doing things that are wrong, but it's about the people on the platforms. And as you think about your recommendations, how different does it have to be because these are open platforms and not just individual companies with the power? Julia, that's a great question. The, the central point of my op-ed in the Washington Post is that we need three kinds of regulation. And it's basically to change incentives. The, as you correctly point out, the platforms have created an environment on which a lot of bad things can happen because they're built on this notion of attention. And so they compete for our attention by amplifying the things that are most likely to engage us emotionally. That turns out to be hate speech, disinformation, and conspiracy theories for an awful lot of people. And so the result of that is harm. So what I want to see is I want to see a, a change similar to what happened in the building trades uh, but also in the chemicals industry, but especially in building trades, where essentially you sign up for a code of conduct, where everyone in technology has to sign up to agree to anticipate and prevent harm before shipping products. Because right now there's no incentive to even think about that. And in the case of the building trades, so think about contractors and architects, if you violate building codes, you are personally responsible. And I think that kind of responsibility would have a huge impact culturally in Silicon Valley. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.